It's okay to be affected by the passing of someone you didn't know personally. And someone's passing, part of you can pass too, part of your childhood. We all might remember where we were when he had 81, with that trip you took to the game with your parents where he didn't flinch when Barnes checked the ball, or how every time you threw out a piece of paper, you yell, Kobe! I remember how Kobe's Instagram page recently turned into a love note for his daughters. It's all part of life. To be affected by someone's passing is calm passion in the most pure form, which is to say, to suffer with quite literally. And in that way, we think of Vanessa and Natalia and Bianca and Capri and the Alto Belli, Chester, Zobalia, and Mauser families. We walk with them in their suffering. We share their path. It's in this way we carry forward Gigi, whose story was just being told. It's in that way we carry all we have lost. Because the fact is, no one's path is theirs alone. No one's life served one purpose. Kobe Bryant, again, exceptional in this regard, in the ways he united people, encouraged people, provided a mentality, the way his life had complexity and tribulations. We consider his death and his life as we speak of the fullness of it and all those who were part of it. This is grace to amplify the best of ourselves. You can't live a life untouched by grief or tragedy. There are feelings you never want to feel, you never forget, but they are feelings you must give voice to. It might be the best tool we have to process. I heard it said by some, it feels worse today. It's a key point in recovery. It doesn't get better with time, it gets better with time and work. So consider letting your work be in how you voice your feelings and talk about other people, talk about people's lives in full, carry forward their spirit. Most importantly, be with the ones in your life and allow them, even in loss, to always be with you. We lost our only Kobe Bryant this week. There will never be another.